So we're starting another topic related to functions of multiple variables. So this phrase here is referring to, you know, functions of x and y or x, y, and z, etc. And um, let me just draw your attention to the title, Chain Rules. Do you um, notice anything strange about that title? Well, the something strange is that right there. That S implies there's more than one chain rule. It's plural. So the first type of chain rule we're going to look at, and the one that we're going to spend the most time on, is the chain rule for what's called a single independent variable. So x and y, or x, y, and z are the variables of the function. This independent variable is something um, not those. And you might recognize it a little bit when we get there. Um, but let me just show you the, um, the formula. And I'm just going to bust it out and give it to you. Um, so if we have a function of x and y, and x and y could be equal to two other functions. Right? This is very similar to when we had our vector value functions, if you recall. So we're hinting at mixing these two worlds together a little bit right now. So x gets replaced by some function of t, and y gets replaced by some function of t. So there would be then a single independent variable afterwards. Then if w is the name of the function, or f is the name of the function, either of those, and t is our one and only variable after we substitute, then a single variable derivative is like calculus 1. And so we use the notation for the traditional first derivative, dw dt. And this is a little bit more formal. And this is what I'm going to suggest to you is the easier way to read it. I want you to see that however you choose to look at this, there's partial derivative notation and then there's regular derivative notation. And so that is a partial derivative right there. But this is a regular derivative right here. Same thing is true no matter how you write it. Um, again, I kind of prefer this one because the more symbols that we see, the harder it is to process. So let's just do sort of the copy and paste for just a moment and just sort of see what the formula, um, how it gets used. Assuming that we have this information provided, we're just going to be math robots and, and try a formula out without having a reason at the moment. Oh yes, one more thing you should note. The prime symbol, you know prime, that symbol right there, don't use it. Whoops, off the screen, there we go. The prime symbol for derivative, do not use it. It will be used pretty much only when we find the velocity and acceleration vectors uh, in this course, and it pretty much isn't used anywhere else for lots and lots of reasons. Um, but at least with partial derivatives, there is a shorthand that's pretty good. It's pretty good. So let me take you on a little tour of a sample. All right. So, we have a function of two variables, w equals the square root of x squared minus y squared. And we're also provided a, what x is equivalent to and what y is equivalent to in terms of now a single independent variable. 
we're going to use this chain rule to find dw dt. And so the way that appears here is we take the x parcel derivative of this expression 1 half x squared minus y squared to the negative half power multiplied by the derivative of this if x is the variable which is 2x times what is the derivative of this if t is the variable well that's a pretty simple derivative e to the t power so that's this right here plus the y parcel derivative of our original function 1 half x squared minus y squared negative 1 half power multiplied by negative 2y because y is the variable times the y parcel uh, sorry the y regular derivative here because there's only one variable the derivative with respect to t is cosine of t okay and I have an algebra mess here so I'm just put a little thought in here we need to now replace x and y values with the x and y values here t is the variable for this problem so that shouldn't be too difficult to algebraically do the substitution half of 2 is 1 so that leaves me x and but x is e to the t power and then over the square root of because minus one half power x squared would be e to the 2t minus y squared which would be minus sine squared of t multiplied by e to the t which is that right there plus half of two cancels oh it's actually a minus sign so I guess I'm just going to write it as a minus sign y which is sine of t square root e to the 2t minus sine squared t cosine t Well, let's see. If we multiply these together, we would add their exponents. So that would be equivalent to e to the 2t minus sine of t cosine of t all over the square root e to the 2t minus sine squared of t. Again, it's an algebra problem, and the, one of the, the downsides of just having an algebra problem is we can get into math mode, but don't even wonder about the real world of this potential uh, interesting situation. But if we're just copying and pasting into a formula, we get this would be the derivative um, with a single variable substitute afterwards. So there's a question what if we had substituted x and y first what if we put x and y into the function at the beginning and then found the derivative with respect to t would we get this answer so let's try that out getting kind of messy there so let's just slide that out of the way here's our question again so let's do substitution first and see what happens so W would be equal to 
x squared would be e to the 2t minus y squared, which is sine squared of t. And then I would like to do a calculus 1 derivative. What is the derivative with respect to t? Right? This is, we'll call it um, single variable calculus. The good old days. I could almost use prime here without getting into trouble. Trust me, with we get to where we're headed, the the prime symbol is not what we what we want. So let's see, product, uh, no products. We got a chain, one half e to the two t minus sine squared t to the negative one half power multiplied by the derivative of this function. So the derivative of e to the 2t is 2e to the 2t minus the derivative of sine squared. Oh, pause here. That's sine of t squared. So there's a power rule. 2 times sine of t to the first power with the derivative of sine, which is cosine. And both of these have a factor of 2, which will reduce with this nicely. And I think I get this. All right, apparently I can't talk and write at the same time. Over e to the 2t minus sine squared t. Um, I think this is the same. So I guess we could actually ask this question. Don't tell your teacher, but we could ask this question. Um, why do we even have this chain rule? That's a good question. So stay tuned, come back, you'll find out there is a pretty good reason.